Hey guys, we're going to talk about how the exchange rate can affect inflation. Now, inflation is measured by what is known as the Consumer Price Index, or the CPI. And this is the most common measure of inflation available to us. It is also measured by the Producer Price Index, or the PPI, but we're not going to worry about this for this lecture. We're just going to worry about the most common, and that's the CPI, or the Consumer Price Index. Yeah. So, what the exchange rate can do is it can fluctuate either upwards or downwards. So the exchange rate can either appreciate, denoted by an upwards arrow, or depreciate, denoted by a downwards arrow. So depreciate or appreciate. That's what the exchange rate can do that can affect depreciate. Let's read right that. Okay. So depreciate okay so now we're going to talk about this lecture in two separate um, two separate anal pieces of analysis first we're going to use talk about see what the effect of an in appreciating inflation uh, in exchange rate and what the effect that has on inflation so we're going to put that one and secondly we're going to talk about what had deflation also, depreciation can cause what effect that can cause on inflation. Okay. So, as we know, inflation is actually a component of two things. So, inflation occurs either due to demand pull or cost push. So, they're the two sources of inflation where there is excessive aggregate demand or there is excessive demand for certain products which cause uh, producers to increase the price. Or because the cost of production increases, and to keep the, um, keep the product margin or profit margin, producers would increase price. Okay, so the exchange rate. How would that affect inflation? Okay, so when the exchange rate appreciates, this would have an effect on, as we know, net exports. So we know that aggregate demand. I'm going to put this in note. This one. So this is the first piece of analysis when the exchange rate appreciates. So we know that aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus net exports. So we know that consumption is domestic, investment is domestic, savings, um, government spending is also domestic, but net exports relate to the overseas sector, and that's where the exchange rate has the most prevalent or the most powerful um, impact on the aggregate demand equation. So as we should know, when aggregate demand increases, demand poor inflation occurs. Okay, so how how does aggregate demand increase, net exports increase? Okay, so when net exports increase, this would mean that the exchange rate has, has changed in some sort of a way. So when the exchange rate appreciates, we can see that the Australian good or service becomes less competitive overseas. So when the exchange rate appreciates, Domestic products become less competitive. And that's an intuitive sense because buyers from overseas need to exchange more of their currency for our currency, therefore, it becomes uh, less attractive to international purchasers or consumers to purchase our product. So if we look at the example of clothing, our clothing costs a lot because of high labor costs as opposed to clothing made in China or Malaysia, which have relatively lower labor costs. Okay, so when the exchange rate appreciates, it's very common to see that net exports would decrease. So when net exports decrease, aggregate demand should decrease, and therefore demand pool inflation should go down. That's purely from an aggregate demand point of view. But what, all, what it also means is that the exchange rate, when the exchange rate appreciates, imports increase. So we know that exports decrease because we're becoming less internationally competitive, but we also know that imports increase because our dollars become more competitive, because we, can, we have greater purchasing power from the same dollar. We can purchase more things. So instead of purchasing domestically, we're going to buy that shirt, we're going to buy that toy from overseas. So imports increase. So what that means is when imports increase, 
because the CPR is calculates inflation because that includes both domestic and imported goods and services imports are also included in the CPI so what this means is because we're importing more because imports are cheaper this is a big uh, thing to note because they are cheaper therefore the CPI would decrease because they're included in the calculation of the, ch of the CPI. So what happens is imports increase, and because they are cheaper, and because they are cheaper, therefore CPI would decrease. And since inflation is measured by the CPI, then and because they are final goods and services that we're importing, therefore we're going to see a decrease in demand inflation. This is all caused by this thing here, the aggregate demand of the economy. Because aggregate demand has decreased, therefore demand for inflation will have eased. Okay, so now let's move on to the second part. When, uh, when there is a depreciation in the Australian dollar. So when the Australian dollar depreciates, the aggregate demand side of this equation is, is fairly similar. So we're going to have an increase in exports, a decrease in imports, and therefore because imports represent uh, are represented in the CPI because everything has become more expensive, therefore obviously we're going to see an increase in demand for inflation. So we're, we're not going to focus on uh, so, as so much on demand for inflation when the exchange rate depreciates, but we're going to focus on how this affects cost push inflation. So when the exchange rate depreciates, we know that imports become more expensive, right? And truly speaking, we know that when the Australian dollar depreciates, we can purchase uh, less foreign goods and services with the same dollar. And that's, that's um, obviously occurred to us in our day-to-day -day interactions with eBay or with anything online shopping wise. So we know that imports become more expensive when the dollar depreciates. But that's only part of the CPI. So when the CPI that's when the CPI increases obviously demand for inflation will increase. But we're going to talk about the producers, the producer price index. No we I know we I said in the previous lecture we're not going to talk about the producer price index. Or in the previous uh, in the start of this lecture we're not going to talk about the producer price index. But it is not important to know that the producer price index is also another measure of inflation, especially cost push inflation. So we're going to see how imports affect cost push inflation. So we know imports represent 80% of total inputs in the economy. And we're just going to take this as a given. So 80% of inputs, so intermediate goods and services are imported from another country. So this could be capital equipment, this could be even um, say uh, materials, fabric, cars, all that. They're all included in this um, imported stage of production. And so what this means is we talked about the, the markup, we talked about how the producers want to keep a profit of uh, $2, say, for a product. Initially, it cost $8 to produce, and the markup in red, the profit, we're going to denote that as pi, so the profit is $2 here, and this is the cost of production. We're just going to go COP. Now, what if the cost of production has increased because our exchange rate has depreciated? So, inputs cost more to buy from overseas. So the cost of production has in fact increased from $8 to $10. The producers want to keep that profit margin because they're greedy and they want to maximize their living standards. And so they're going to keep it. They're going to keep this profit margin at $2 as, as was before. Now they can justify the increase in price because their imports have increased in price. And so the producer price index has also increased because intermediate goods and services cost more for producers and therefore this is passed on to 
the CPI or the final goods and services because of the value added method that inflation takes or the CPI, the calculation of the CPI takes. It includes a value added method. Okay, so now as we know, when the cost of production increases, then because businesses aim to keep the profit margin, then therefore the CPI would also increase due to cost push inflation here. So that's the effect exchange rate has has on inflation. It causes the CPI to either increase or decrease. So when the exchange rate rises or appreciates, we can see that imports become cheaper, exports become more expensive, and therefore demand poor inflation will go down. And as we know that because imports represent 80% of inputs, cost push inflation would also go down as well because imports becomes cheaper and they have less incentive or less uh, less practicality to increase prices. And now because, uh, let's say, the exchange rate depreciates, aggregate demand would increase because exports become more competitive or cheaper to overseas and therefore exports would increase. But at the same time, imports become less competitive and we need to forego a greater amount of Australian dollars to purchase imports and so imports would decrease. So that is how inflation can be affected by the exchange rate. So demand, first we have demand pool, and secondly we have cost push inflation, all which contribute to an either an increase or a decrease in the consumer price index.